Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion and, of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me is Ian. Hey, I'm your writer. Also joining us is Ella. Hello, I'm Rosar. And since Argent is absent, I have the show and tell for today. <sighs> okay, yeah. And I have this lovely headpiece okay. I got for Christmas. Yeah, it's January, it's... so, you know, c- close enough. The Christmas season technically yeah. ended yesterday depending yeah. on how you count it so yeah that perfect. Of, like getting christmas stuff for christmas perfect yeah Very <laughs> nothing <timely>. like getting <laughs> christmas stuff it's like ah you'll use it next year have fun <laughs> yeah. uh happy new year's everyone it, it is yes, january happy new year. it, yeah. it's happy new i can't year. believe it's 2022 uh and mm. yeah. lastly we have veronica Hello, I am Cheyenne Sedai on the forums. Hello! And, well, Discord, of course. I'm yeah. more on Discord than on the forums. Uh, yeah. I think we all are at this point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> come join Discord! Yeah. Uh, but we, I, I sometimes go to the forums. Uh, I got stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Chaos, and so welcome to 2022. And at the end of 2021, we had... Evershore, the third Skyward Flight novella. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about all things Evershore. Uh, obviously, spoilers for the first two Skyward Flight novellas. You should you should probably read those two first uh, before, you know, reading Evershore, I would hope. I think Cytonic spoilers will... We have a little bit to talk about, about that, but we'll probably just leave that for the end. Uh, and so we'll we'll put a chapter there uh, about that. And in addition to Evershore, we're going to talk about the novellas as a whole. Uh, because, you know, there's going to be the Skyward Flight novella collection in April, which mm-hmm. uh, is, is honestly a great deal, I think. Like, get a lot of content for that money. It's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about both of those. This will not be a mini episode, unlike those allegedly <laughs> mini episodes that I did for Sunday. <laughs> they weren't <laughs> mini Hey, look, look, look. Below two hours is a mini episode for this I mean, show. yeah. <laughs> Significantly it easier to edit to here. At this point. Yeah. Flashback to our, like, one of our our first episodes of, like, this iteration of Shardcast, which was, like, 40-something minutes. It was 44 <laughs> minutes so of Ringer Part 2 epigraphs. And, I, and mm. then I oh looked at God. Rhythm of Wars, and I think we did over two hours. I'm like, that sounds about right. That checks out. <laughs> Yeah, how like, long we've really a Titanic episode. We, we've we've really uh, nailed our craft. We've really uh, honed it out and stretched it out. No, hopefully, hope, <laughs> we're not deliberately trying to pad for time here. We're, that's not working. <laughs> no, it just uh, happens. It just, ha- it just happens. So <laughs> let's talk about some spoiler-free Evershore reactions. What did you think, Ian? Why don't you start us off? I really liked it. One of my favorite things. Yes. I mean, one of my favorite things is the whole slug thing at the end because it's just a trope I really love. But uh-huh. I love Kitson names for places. Oh, they they're are. They're just great. so yeah. good. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Th- the den of everlasting light, which laps gently upon the shores of time. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I like this. <laughs> yeah. It's it's pretty delightful. Oh, oh what do you think? You remember this. Yeah. Uh, what did I think? Well, I, I really enjoyed it. Like, who could have guessed the book about cytonic powers is something I would love? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you weren't yeah. on the Redon one. You, you, you could give us a quick recap on what you felt about Redon, because you weren't on the Redon episode. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed Redon too. Like, I there are, there are things I felt... There was, like, one thing I felt iffy about with Redon. It kind of continued into Evershore, but we can get to that later. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But to be honest, like, I, it's hard for me to tell if I prefer Redon or Evershore. Because, like, Evershore does a really, really good job of, like, being the finale of this story. Because mm-hmm. those novellas, like, they are, like, marketed as three separate novellas, but they are very much, like, oh. one ongoing story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This definitely splits, but uh, like, you should read the collection. If you, it's, like, yeah. two tiny avalanches and one huge avalanche. Yeah. yeah. In, in retrospect, like, seeing it as a whole... I feel like Evershore even ends up making Sunreach look look better because Evershore has payoffs to some stuff from Sunreach. Yeah, it does. Mm. It totally does. Yeah, it, it definitely like it definitely works as the climax to the entire like story of Skyward Flight. Yeah. yeah. 
Veronica, so, yeah. what about you? It was my favorite of the three. Not surprising because Jorgen is my favorite character. Yeah, okay, in, that checks uh, out. The uh, series. And also, I want to congratulate Jancy because just a while before we started recording this, uh, Evershore hit the USA Today bestseller list. Ooh, so fun. That's a nice. big accomplishment. So that is great. Jancy. That is bestseller, fantastic. USA Today bestselling author Jancy Patterson. Oh, yes. nice. We Which, have to address like, her with the full title. Yeah, I, I, I was reading and like, I guess like it's been a, a surprise to everyone that like the there hasn't been a huge drop off with sales for mm-hmm. the, the three novellas because like generally like the further you get into a series like the fewer people buy them but it's like sales have been pretty constant and like Evershore has done fantastically well. That is almost is surprising given. How many people are buying things after Christmas? Is, you know, <laughs> there's a reason why people try and do November, December for the holiday window. Uh, mm-hmm. Like in December being like, ooh, December 14th is like near the end of that window, right? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so I, all of the people getting gift cards for Christmas have to spend them on something. That's true. I mean, that yeah. is true. That's a good point. I also mm-hmm. imagine, like, w- what we mentioned earlier, that the Skyward Flight is, like, a very coherent, cohesive story also help mm-hmm. with, mm-hmm. like, reader retention. E- because, like... Yeah. Especially with the way Redon ends. Yeah. You know, yeah. You clearly don't get the complete story by just reading Sunridge or Sunridge and Redon. If you get to the end of Redon... You're buying ever <laughs> like you just you just are right, surely. Yeah, yeah I really loved uh, Evershore. Uh, it's always I'm an endings focused person, so when you land <laughs> the ending, it's like oh, all the setup is just raised up because like ah oh, yes we because they are very connected and we we see like FM doing stuff and that's great uh, and it, and she's very important in this and. Mm-hmm. But it's also just really great to see Jorgen uh, come into his own. And I'm like, oh, yes, this is, mm-hmm. yep. I think this is always yeah. the one that if we're getting three novellas of Skyward Flight uh, characters, Jorgen's like top of the list on the one we want. So we got to end on a high note. Great yeah, character conflict. So people. good. Yeah. yeah, Which is like, obvious, like it's true. But Jorgen wasn't originally on Brandon's list of okay characters. I know. Yeah. That Jancy like had to pitch a story to get Jorgen, and I'm so glad she did. Yeah, well, pres- presumably because Brandon was still like thinking he'd do that in the main series, right? Mm-hmm. Uh True. so yeah. but yeah. Holy crap. So good. Uh do we have other spoiler-free things to say? Because I feel like we have so many spoiler things to talk about <laughs> yeah. that mm-hmm. I don't know. I could just say that I really liked the space battle stuff. Like, it was weird, and the stuff that happened in it was awesome. <laughs> and, like, it even called back to Skyward, the book yeah. Skyward. Yeah. Yeah. You remember tension in, uh, in, in Skyward? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. It's so nice the novellas <laughs> having, having that. It's, it's yeah. really good. I, I am definitely one of those people who prefer the novellas to Cytonic. Mm hmm. I admit, because it it was doing more of the stuff I wanted to see in the series, like the things that originally attracted me to Skyward. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I would also say that I very much mm. like the novellas better but uh, than Cytonic, but having them both, you, you get a complete feast. You get a mm-hmm. feast of Skyward content right here yeah. at the end. Like, you're getting both of those, you do... A th- kind of get two novels like all three novellas mm-hmm. together you get its own novel and I mean, Cytonic, <laughs> you get you get another novel and it, as a whole it's like wow the, the, together these are all great and you get you, you touch all the bases yeah. as the resident person who really likes Cytonic, i, I do not really have like a Cytonic. preference between the oh, okay. two like they are okay. both like very good stories they're just Mm-hmm. different stories they're, they're like, very different this is like, yes. i'm glad we have this like but i'm glad like like th- this is like a a side thing is the wrong way of putting it but it, it's psychotic makes sense to me as like the next star in the main arc 
this is like a supporting arc like it's like necessary for the series to function but it's not like it's because skyward is the story of spencer so whereas like this like yes it's the story of spencer I, I your audio listeners so can, don't don't see uh i was just like because mm, yeah. jess couldn't be but, on this show but she would say that this is very main plot stuff in the novellas. Yeah, I guess it comes down to like what, which so. part of the setting you prefer. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like think so. because yeah. they, I do, I do agree that they both feel like equalish, and it's uh, whether you will find Cytonic or Skyward Flight more in more main plotty feels like it depends on what what you find more important about the previous two books. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. I like Cytonic more than most people I found. I still like the novellas more, but that's also because I really like uh the character development in those. Um particularly uh with Jorgen, like I mentioned, Jancy wrote him so well. So yeah. yep. nailed I it. I think that's that's what uh gives the novellas the edge for me, but I do like uh Cytonic more than most people I found. Yeah. I guess, like, my, I'm going to make a Star Wars comparison. Okay. Which is uh-huh. imperfect. Yes. Because the thing I want to compare it to. So it's like, we have, like, the original trilogy. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then you have Rogue One. Uh-huh. And so it's like, the novellas are like Rogue One if Rogue One was actually happening during the trilogy and wasn't just a prequel. Mm, okay. Where it's like, I, it's I, important, I, I like, it, it fills out the world, but, like, it's not the main series because like the main story of the original trilogy is luke leia han like Mm -hmm. uh, that Mm -hmm. comparison i i think you know that that comparison is definitely not perfect it's Uh, it's a very flawed comparison yes yes Uh, but it's like it's the closest i can get in terms of other media of what i'm trying to get across yeah well, we'll we'll talk about near the end when we do Cytonic spoilers, so we can get into some specifics uh, as to because you know Cytonic references some things that happen here and and mm-hmm. and things like that, and how that's gonna work for Defiant, the fourth mm-hmm. book. So we'll 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 talk about all that. Um, I, I would. There is a lot of important stuff that happens in these that uh like, I mean, granted, there is Kitson politicking. Is that important for the mainline story? Okay, no, that's that's not. I I, I agree. But there there is a lot of stuff that is very important, I think. Yeah. Um yeah. and so I'm interested to see how Brandon will go from here because like you can't guarantee that people will have read the novellas, right? Mm-hmm. Uh so that that's gonna be a tricky balance. Um Yeah. So I don't know how that's going. But let's talk about some spoilers let's also do like just general spoilery reactions stuff you liked stuff you maybe didn't like let's go top moments well i uh-huh. uh, def- detritus death star yeah <laughs> D- yep. detritus teleporting was, was- I- i'll just i'll just bleep it Awesome. There we go. Uh, it was uh, ridiculous, and I loved it. It was, it was insane. <laughs> I, I loved, though, that they're like, hey, maybe teleporting a planet is going to affect the tides. I was like, oh, I'm glad we <laughs> dealt with that, because that's... Yeah, it's like, good. as soon as it happened, I'm like, this is problematic. Like, um, this is going <laughs> to wreak havoc on the tides. And like, like half a page later, it's like... They, he gets the cost. So, like, Yo, this planet. World water planet, this is like a big problem. And yeah, like, yeah, other well, stories, I feel like, could just be like, oh, suspend your disbelief. Like, it's just supposed yeah. to be cool, you know? Yeah. But, like, yeah. my favorite part of that is, like, yeah, like, that's going to pull all of the water to one side of the planet and cause, like, a huge wave if, like, one of our planets doesn't rip the other apart first. And, like, okay. <laughs> Yikes. I love that yeah. line. Yeah. I, I love, like, it's it's so ridiculous. Like, the fact that an entire planet was apparently equipped with like teleportation and graph caps, and apparently some some humans in the distant past decided that you know what this barren rock needs, 
ability to move to other star systems <laughs> and, and grab caps. And yep. then you just get Jorgen collecting all the slugs. So, like, the slugs, very important through all three of these. And so it was like, ah, uh, because I remember in Sunreach, right? You know, Jorgen was like, ah, the slugs, I don't know. And here he's like, yeah, let's go. Let's get all the slugs. <laughs> Hell yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, the, I... the true love story of Skyward Flight is Jorgen and slugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I am such a sucker for the trope where it's like reinforcements arrive at the last moment. Yeah. Because it's like, like, Endgame had it. Um, yeah. Disney's Encanto has it yes. at the very end. I'm like, <laughs> uh, that, I, I teared up at that. But like, it is just so earned with the Tritus because you're like, what the crap are we doing mm-hmm. on this place? I have no <laughs> idea what this is. And it's like, this is what we're doing with this place. Hell yeah. Love it. Get payoff with the slugs. We get payoff with the Tritus lore. Amazing. And like there's yeah, foreshadowing of the platforms tra- teleporting, right? And yeah. Right? So it makes okay, sense. Like, it the Lord ben that many, yeah. Why do they need that many cages? Yeah. They want to the teleport, teleport planet. planet. <laughs> it's a teleport planet, right? Exactly. I, I do admit I am I am kind of curious about like how this works mechanically, because <laughs> like so like so like not not from the perspective of like uh, the actual technology of like moving the whole plan, but like the magic system, because mm-hmm. so far we mm-hmm. haven't really had a such situ- like the way cytonics have been set up so far. It seems like the like teleportation and communication it's all like independent of like mass and distance. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you can teleport uh, for one meter, you can teleport a thousand light years. If you can move yourself, mm-hmm. you can move an entire ship. Like the like in Starside, the superiority ships like mm-hmm. use like single slugs to move, regardless of the size of the ships they're moving. So mm-hmm. I am wondering mm-hmm. if, if like okay. there comes a point where mass of what you're moving becomes a factor, and that's yeah. why you need so many slugs, or mm-hmm. if there's like one very very tired, very they, load-bearing yeah. slug there's somewhere a, there's in the planet. a giant job of the hut slug. I <laughs> teleport oh the whole God. thing. <laughs> I have a Poor theory, slug. and it's this isn't the Cosmere. But uh-huh. a frame of reference. Uh-huh. I don't think a single entity can teleport a entire planet because that's too big for one thing. A network of slugs encompassing like a sphere around a planet. It's big enough. Like there's a network load bearing, and it's like surrounding, and like it makes sense, to right? I guess the thing I was was wondering is why didn't just all the shells move and not. Like, did we have to bring the planet with? I don't know, you know. Hmm. But but you know yeah, what? I, it's too cool that I I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. the, I my like assumption when reading this was like there was some sort of like ancient human magic tech that you know uh, that the systems that con- the teleportation boxes were somehow rigged to move the planet instead of the plates. They must have, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure, yeah. for sure, for sure. Yeah. yeah, unless unless there is like like you said the Jabba the Hutt slug somewhere in the no, in no. the center of the <laughs> but, but, but you can no. but but please draw some fan art of that maybe with the boom slug <laughs> yeah. like uh, sunglasses on that yeah nice mm-hmm. yeah yeah and we know there are people that like to uh, draw slug fan Great. art perfect into the there Discord, you go so. free yeah. ideas but yeah because it's like what? it's not just like detritus isn't just a random planet like there is something special about the planet itself mm-hmm. it's not just like oh we built this around a random thing it's like because it's like the t- the tunnels are important yeah mm-hmm. so it makes sense they would want to bring the the, the yeah if if, if yeah. only because that is also the source of slugs right like yeah like it, it, I, I imagine yes. it's more than that right but like you need a lot mm-hmm. of slugs and the, the slugs are you know reproducing down there like that that's also mm-hmm. a source of slugs yeah. right though my theory is that like Presumably, all of those cages were full eventually, and then all of the humans died, and the slugs were like, "Yo, let's go down to the planet." Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's true. that's true. Yeah, because yeah, I don't think the slugs are like native to Detritus. I guess that's yeah. true. No. It's it's hard to tell because obviously the Tainix have gone lots of places Everywhere. in the galaxy, which is yeah. I mean, makes sense. Especially, they can teleport. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
And I am still like half convinced that the slugs are at least partially genetically engineered for their abilities. <laughs> it's like yeah, a it's, it's a head count I am not letting go. Okay, Sorry. that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. No, while we are on the topic of slugs, I know I am I have acquired something of a reputation about <laughs> oh, yeah. how I feel about the slugs. Uh-huh. So I will say the moment of like the slug cavalry arriving felt more comedic than awesome to me. It- but I did like the the thread throughout the novella of like boom slug saying boom and the organ replying. It, yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, adorable. admittedly, it is a completely zany thing. It's like Jorgen gets all the slugs and then they all teleport in. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, it, yeah, no right. question. So I think that <laughs> was reaction is completely and reasonable. Fine. Spoke on his behalf. Spoke on his behalf. Yeah, and he's like, ask them for help. And it's yeah. so cute. I'm like, the the yeah, connection with human much. and slug. Yeah, like, yeah, on that's paper, the part it sounds insane, and it act- but it actually works. So The, the real friends mm-hmm. were the slugs we made along the way. I hope they didn't make the slugs. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the slugs we met along the way, rather. I guess that's how there that goes, go. huh? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I... I have mixed feelings about the like Jorgen summoning the slugs, but I am willing to let it pass because it led to Death Star Detritus. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's just fantastic highlight of it. In fact, really, the into- entire ending avalanche, there's so much going on that it's 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 yeah. awesome. Like it's not just yeah. the capstone for this novella, but the sequence of novellas. So good. Uh, Jess's criticism is actually that there's just like kind of too much going on. And so like we don't have moments have breathing room necessarily because there's just a lot going on. She didn't really like that the life buster was able to be dealt with so casually when like that was such a big moment in Mm -hmm. Skyward. I loved that the Mm -hmm. life busters returned because I'm like, yeah, we haven't seen those in a while. We should probably... Like, that was a kind of a big deal. But that said, right, obviously, now that we know more about Cytonics, that's easier an easier problem to deal with. I, now. I like the Life yeah. Buster sequence. You know, it's kind of... Do you, you know how, like, in video games, sometimes you, like, early on in a game, you fight a boss? Uh-huh. And, mm-hmm. like, much, much later, you meet the same boss, but it's, like, an mm. overworld MOOC that you dispatch because you're, like... 50 levels higher than you were back when you fought it. <laughs> it's kind of like that. So for me, the, the Life Buster thing kind of worked from the perspective of like the whole series as like showing that they were like the, the boss early in the game, early in the story. But by now we've leveled up enough that we can just deal with it almost off page. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it, it, it helps show like there has been development, like they have been improving, they've been acquiring new skills. So it's yeah, like, plus. so it's like, and that's fine. Like, go, showing them against new enemies, but like, bring, bringing back an old enemy was cool. It's not like they weren't worried about it; they were mm-hmm. worried about it, but they were able to deal with it easier. Also, going back to Jesse's other comment that about things not getting breathing <laughs> room, it's like I liked that because it does help lend this like frenetic air to the whole battle sequence it's like we don't get a breathe a moment of breathing room because Jorgen's not getting a moment of breathing mm-hmm. room like yeah it's stressful for him it's stressful for us so it's yeah. a nice yeah. little way to parallel the reader experience look i, I mean really i love like avalanches them. like that i mm-hmm. even if brandon's like i should probably space out my climaxes in my book so that each one has more impact but there's still part of me like I love the giant avalanche where everything happens. I I, I love it. Yeah. And like speaking of like uh, paralleling like what the reader's reaction and the character's reaction is reminded me a bit without spoilers of a memory of light where the last battle was written that way to be exhausting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, Because a character earlier said, you're going to get the battle you're wanting and the more. And so it's supposed to be exhausting, not only for the characters, but for the reader as well. And that's why that chapter, chapter 37 is so absolutely gigantic yeah, yeah it's yeah, like a yeah. hundred pages long yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you just longer than the first harry potter books. book like yep that's yeah. a, that's a serious mm-hmm. one um yeah it also worked for me like the ever show not memory of light <laughs> <I haven't read laughs> that one. 
Uh, but yeah, Evershore ending also worked for me because it's like it feels like an ending to the entire novel trilogy. Mm-hmm. So we have to pay off the stuff from Sunreach and the stuff for from Redown and the stuff from Evershore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And speaking of things paid off from Sunreach, in addition to the slugs, FM and Jorgen's relationship, like that's mm-hmm. been a big through line through uh these three and their conflict. Uh, like I love the scene. Like everything, Jor- Jorgen's fantastic, but him struggling with mind blades and accidentally throwing the mind blades at the kids <laughs> in Senate, uh, and then FM's like, "No, we really need to talk about this." And then we're like, "Finally, you're talking about your feelings, Jorgen. Oh my god, it's yeah. taking forever." He literally exploded. <laughs> he literally yep. Exploded. <laughs> uh, that was amazing. And, but just seeing how that relationship progressed, uh, with given what FM said to him uh, earlier, uh, it's just really good. Like I, I really liked that, and mm-hmm. I really liked how FM has still been an important character, doing kind of the same things in mm-hmm. these, and still being in that role. So I, I really liked how that progressed. I will go yeah. as far as saying that I liked FM in Evershore more than I liked her in Sunreach, <laughs> despite her being the protagonist of Sunreach. <laughs> yeah, because I, I think I said this on the Sunreach episode, but I I did talk about like how FM didn't really mm, feel yeah. like the mm-hmm. protagonist of her own story. Mm. And it felt to me like she was doing more protagonisty things in Evershore, despite being off screen with the whole diplomacy mm. with Kids and and mm. like getting Jorgen in order and etc. It's tricky because Evershore's situation, there's a lot more to do. Whereas like yeah. a lot of Sunreach, it's not that there's like, not anything to do. Like obviously the the gunship is there and that's a big threat, but a lot of it is training with sucks. <laughs> right? like, it's, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's different. Yeah. Yeah, like in retrospect, like looking back of all on all the three novellas together, Sunreach to me definitely suffers from being the the setup part of the yes. of the story. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's like the beginning without the ending, and because the ending are the next two novellas, so it kind of came out at least to me as the weakest of the three because, well, it had to set the ground for the rest of the story. Yeah, I mean it's it's for the same reason that like you you wouldn't read like one part of a Stormlight book. Like that alone is not the whole meal, right? And really these these three novellas you want to get that complete story together which which is why I think the novella collection is just what a great deal. Like each story is good but the whole is great, I think, you know? And Sunreach is the weakest one because it is. We're setting up these elements. Like you're totally right. Let's maybe talk about Jorgen because there's yes. a lot of Jorgen character yes. stuff, and it is yeah. good stuff. It is one of my favorite parts of like the whole series of novellas. Like even yep. when we weren't inside his head, I love the character development we were getting for him. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. he's learning to adapt to different set of situations than he is used to when, I mean, the chain of command isn't working. <laughs> uh, he's like, well, for once, not following the rules. And oh, I yeah. do think that kind of character development is really interesting. It's also part of why um, in Warbreaker, uh, like, Vivena was my uh, favorite character. It's a similar arc. Uh, well, in some ways. And like i i really like that uh like adaptation process and where both of those characters ended up by the end of their respective stories yeah, i mean jorgen had a lot to do to grow more flexible and things right like that is what he needed mm-hmm. to do uh and really you see all along that this is through these novellas this is all about jorgen taking kind of, really right like that, yeah. that, that's kind of what it's about it, right mm-hmm. yeah like i i reread evershore last night um, uh-huh but i've also been rereading well of ascension uh-huh recently Ooh. and so it's like seeing like jorgen's like path to leadership paralleled with ellen's path to leadership in yeah. well of ascension i'm like oh like i really like this like ah 
the yeah. parallels are cool. Yeah. I definitely agree with Shane that it will Jorgen is my favorite character in this series so far. So, you know, Ever Show was always going to be one of my favorite novellas just by having him as the protagonist. Yeah, yeah pretty much. And I do appreciate that like the core of his character remained like this structured person who like respects the chain of command and can throw the book at you. Like at the st- like at the start of the novel, like the way he just ends up quoting <laughs> regulations and oh, stuff God. to get him. That was amazing. Yeah, and because one of the things I was a little worried when I started Evershore is that okay, let's let's go back a bit. Uh, Starsight. There's an interlude where uh, the Grand Grand tells Jorgen this story about like mm. uh, this one soldier who like stopped the war by not listening to orders and. Jorgen goes on like, like a rant about like, okay, that's that worked out, but what if everyone disrespected orders? And starting Evershore, I was a bit worried that we'd end up going just for a story where Jorgen learns that actually uh, he should be more like those people who disregard orders and be more mm-hmm. like Spencer. So, and yeah, like yeah, like you say, like you you all said, he did become more flexible, but I appreciate that the score of him as this leader character who cares about how things should mm-hmm. be done has remained because it's one of those things that I really liked about him. Yeah. And it's like, there's actually a really nice parallel with that. Like at the end when like Jorgen is trying to open the door to no- the, the nowhere, like Grand Grand has a line. It's like, I had been telling you the same story as I had told Spensa, but you're a different person. You need a different story. It's like Spencer flies amongst the stars like she's a warrior. It's like you build things up from a, the ground. You're a defender. And so it's like yeah. that it, That was a nice tie back. Yeah. That parallel didn't quite work for me because I was like, okay, if he's supposed to be the defender, then why his unique powers are throwing swords and not like casting <laughs> How shields? How are you going to defend with? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I, but with, with mind blades. Look, I don't know how many of you listening have read Defending Elysium. It's kind, it's kind of a, that's kind of a packed story right there. There's a lot of stuff going on in that one. But mind blades have always been cool, and we get like so little of it in the series so far, really, yeah. that it is so great that Jorgen comes into his own with his powers because I knew, right? It's like, oh, he's bad at the communication, right? Like, this, this is his satanic weakness. Okay, sure, totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. So what's he going to be really good at? And He's bad at the teleportation. Yeah, I would say oh, he's yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. so good he's able to communicate with people who aren't satanics. So. Well, yeah. I guess that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. It's been a bit since I've read them, okay? I, I didn't really yeah. ever short it's, for them. <laughs> he's, he needs slugs to teleport. But... Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Which kind of... It kind of ended up funny, like across all three novellas, that uh, both the female cytonics we see are like have teleportations as one of their like primary abilities, but uh-huh. both the male cytonics we see, main ones, <laughs> yes. uh, like uh, Jorgen and Quilan, however you pronounce the Quilan? name of that guy. Oh, right, 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 yeah, right, right. I, 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 they, forget, I always forget what his name is because my name immediately goes to Qui Gon from yeah. Star Wars. <laughs> 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 That's fair. Yeah, because like Jor- Jorgen's specialty are mind blades and Quillan's specialty are like mind punches. Whatever, yeah, whatever right. they were called. Concussion. While oh, concussion. 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 Yeah, while both Alanik and Spencer lean more towards reportation. That, yeah, which, I'm sure that's just coincidental. Uh, yeah, I know it's coincidental. It's just a bit funny. It is, it is funny, but God, Jorgen, like that first time he's using mind blades on that flight. Uh, I, of the superiority and just destroying them. Amazing. And also, in addition to this, one standout character has to be Juno. Who oh, I, uh, so yes. I love this. Like, yes. you are completely relaxed. I'm like, not even a little bit. <laughs> you are calm. <laughs> no. uh, just <laughs> amazing. I I love him so much. It, it was yes. nice seeing more kiss and things and different kitson because mm-hmm. you know hesho and starsight was a very specific sort of kitson and like they're still kitson right but it's nice mm-hmm. seeing 
more Kitson points of view and how they differ and things. Uh, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Juno, great. But yeah, you knew Jorgen was going to have a Cytonic ability that he was going to be really good at. Like he, his main yeah. character status, he's good at something. And so he's, he's like, good all right, things, yeah. let's go. What are we going to get? Yeah. And it was so good. Throwing magic bird swords yeah. is like <laughs> really, really cool. Yeah, it's and it's really cool. Um, funny how uh, you know tells him like you are calm, but yeah, you can make decisions and you can do things while not being completely calm. Like as someone who like plays basketball, like you have to make, be able to make decisions right. while also running high on adrenaline and doing a million things at once. Right. So yep. Also with Jorgen, I just loved. Having his parents get blown up at the yes. end of the last story yeah. made for a very compelling reading in this one, and I yeah. was into yes. it. Uh, yeah, I was like in the in like the opening part of the story before his talk with FM. I was like on the edge of my seat, like especially because like when his memories starting getting muddled, like when he was wondering like did we did we kill that? Were they actually exploded or like? At one point, he started wondering if his parents were killed by mind blades. And I was like, oh, we are doing some freaky memory stuff, which I have, I think I mentioned before, but freaky memory stuff is like, freaks me out. So I was very much like on the edge of my seat for the... I legitimately don't remember this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I don't know if I meant... Yeah, I, I don't know if I, I talked about. Think I might that have was talked about memory stuff. Like it's like there was legitimately mind blades there. Like there was a mind blades. There was a boom slug. Yeah, I did not quite remember how, because I also did not remember how Redon ended. Because my impression was that there weren't mind blades involved, oh my God. and he kept thinking, I haven't like read either. But I'm I'm pretty sure there were mind blades involved. Yeah, I mm. did not. So the way he was like, he also wasn't sure about what he was remembering. So the moment he literally exploded was quite cathartic, I would have to say. So checking the end of Redon, and it's like, <laughs> um, Alanik does find, like, um, I, the room lit up, and there's a, in the center of the large room was a Tanex box with wires. Like, um, there was a large tube connected to a wall that looked suspiciously like a cannon. So it's like, I, the implication, I think, is that's a, a boom slug mind blades and that's what caused the explosion but they would have been killed by m mind blades first yeah i guess what like freaked me out because like like a yeah memory stuff is like mm -hmm. cytonic was very difficult to read because of memory stuff mm -hmm. at, in oh, places yes. yeah. Uh, yeah but yeah so the fact that jorgen was having trouble remembering what actually went down was freaking me out yeah it's like Again, it's like the impression I was like, he wasn't having trouble diff remembering. It's just like he was actually going through and like processing what yeah, would Yeah, the trauma happened. of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, oh, like, oh, explosion. Oh, wait, no. Like the explosion would have, wouldn't have killed them. The mind blades would have gotten them first. I, I just love him struggling with all that. It's, it's, it's so good. Yeah, I do think that uh, Jancy wrote the way Jorgen was dealing with grief very well. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it wasn't the thing where like, he got over it, even if he had a lot of things to do. And so he was like perpetually doing things, but you could still see like the weight of what happened yeah. to his parents affecting him throughout uh, the whole thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I I thought it was like, really well written. Yeah, yeah, it's one of the things I want to ask her about. Ooh, yes, uh, next yes. Time. Uh, I I will I will say uh, I was gonna say this at the end of the episode, but uh, we will have a special episode next week where we will be talking with Jancy. She will be on. We'll be chatting with her about Skyward stuff and the novellas, and it should be lots of fun. Mm -hmm. So stay <laughs> tuned. She seems very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other major thing that happened in this book is uh, Jorgen explores a lot of Cytonics. He explores yep. his abilities. Uh huh. And he also solves the mystery of what happened to the kits in Cytonics. Yeah, that yeah. was very cool. Yeah. Which yeah. basically all the kits in Cytonics got together. And it's like, we're going to open a portal to the nowhere. And then they got sucked in and trapped for forever. Yep. <laughs> yep. And so did Which, Cobb and Grand Grand. They they got stuck there too. Yeah, yeah. Which, that explanation didn't totally work for me. 
I mean, it, it, it does sound pretty implausible when you say it like well, that. Well, yeah. no, it's like the mechanics of like them getting stuck. Total sense. Sure. The fact that no other Cytonics were ever born after that. That is weird. I didn't think yeah. Cytonic was a dominant trait. I thought it was recessive. Mm-hmm. It's so hard so it's to like, say. It feels like there should have still been genetic potential within the kitchen yeah. population yeah. for Cytonics. Fair Kemi was going to pop back up. I mean, come on. I will <laughs> confess it strained my suspension of disbelief a little, though less from the point of view of genetics and more like, so were they actually like all there? Like no one called in sick, no one yeah, like, got late to the meeting. Yeah. That was the yeah, thing. Just that every- did any of them have like a child that was too little like to go to Yeah, the like meeting? every single cytonic, that's... Yeah, like uh, what about uh, the yeah. kids' cytonics? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's just a thing. It's like, okay, let's suspend our disbelief a little bit. Uh, same yeah. with, uh, we'll, we'll talk a bit about that later, but just like Jorgen as a young guy being con- in control of all the DDF. Like, it's a little <laughs> yeah. impossible, even if he did do a lot of great things here. Uh, but, you know, there, there's yeah, a I, few I, things that strain credulity I didn't a little bit. Hate, I didn't hate the like Kids and Cytonics reveal. It was just, yeah, like you said, straining my suspension of disbelief a little bit. Yeah. I did really find interesting Jorgen talking to non cytonics and like detecting the presence of non cytonics. Mm-hmm. Like that was very interesting. Um, yeah, because you're right. He's, he's, he's really good at the communication. I just got mixed up. Um, uh, while we are on this topic, I would say while the whole like explanation was a bit out there i have to say that the the whole sequence where jorgen like unlocks the way for the cytonics to return to evershore was probably one of my favorite like mm-hmm. yeah sequences scenes in the entire series yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and and then those cytonics helping out in the battle like it definitely gave that feel of wide scale epic it's almost like the ghosts in Lord of the Rings, you know? It's like, all right, well, we got this group of reinforcements yeah. coming in, too. There we go. Nice. Uh, hmm. So it's yeah. just actually, really cool. Yeah, actually, Evershore had a lot of, like, my favorite scenes yeah. in the whole series. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that's really good. I think Jess, just on a reread, she was like, some of these moments that are really big moments don't have maybe enough time to breathe to be so awesome because there's just a lot happening so i i think that's yeah. fair to say uh but i i loved it there's there's so much great stuff uh i'm always fond of uh magic powers controlling a massive battlefield through communication which i was totally gonna do in one of my books but uh, this is just done really oh, well here <laughs> oh that's yeah fine. but no 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 that's fine yeah. it's in a totally it's different a context it's fine uh it's it's a trope like star wars I did mean, it like 40 years ago the the legends Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, true. But just seeing it, it, just talking with all the groups and things, it's like, ah, do this, do this, do this. And it was really fun to just see Cobb uh, just be like, wow, Jorgen, you really did a lot of stuff here. (laughs) Uh, Wait, Cobb, you were awake? Oh, yeah, I've been here like for a while. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that, was, that was a good scene. And then I told them to, to contact me. That whole conversation is amazing. Yeah, you—you you seemed like you were doing just fine. <laughs> it was like, but sir, and coming like, don't call me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> don't need to anymore. You—you you know, was like, really? Yeah. He didn't seem as if he believed uh, that uh, he deserved that much authority. Yeah. So I want to uh, talk, uh, with that, I want to talk about some stuff in, in Cytonic, because that's very connected mm-hmm. with that. So we're, we're going to do some Cytonic spoilers uh, right here. Obviously, at the end of Cytonic, you know you're against the charge, and you're like, yes. wait, the hell is going on here, right? <laughs> you yes. also know that the planet teleported. Or it See, is. there Which was is a massive so- spoiler. <laughs> it, 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 it is. <laughs> and I to was be like, honest, I have some, all this is ever short stuff. <laughs> to be honest, on my first Cytonic read, it did not even click for me that Detritus has teleported, because I was like, what the crap is going on with Delver Spencer thing and Jorgen's in charge. Where's Cobb? Is he dead? I don't know. So I was 
as the, there was a lot going on there. And and so one, like obviously after Cytonic, you know Evershore is going to be about York and getting command you know, the whole time. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I wouldn't say that was kind of nice because then you could sort of see, oh yeah, this is how he's growing into being that leader. And that really worked for me. I, I'm glad Cobb isn't dead, because when I read Cytonic, which was before any of the novels, I was like, did they kill Cobb off screen? Because I'm going to be furious if they did. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, no, no, he's just some other stuff happened. He's still alive. Good. But but yeah, like Detritus teleporting. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of a big moment in Evershore. So I'm like, mm, yeah. I don't know about that being released before. Uh, Evershore is out. I would say I completely, when I started reading Evershore, I completely forgot that Cytonic ends with like Jorgen being called an admiral. <laughs> so that the, the part where Jorgen got his Y protagonist promotion kind of caught me off guard. Because <laughs> it is that. It's the, oh, yes, it's I'm, I'm the 17, 18 year old. Uh, I, I think they're 18 now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like, yes, now I am in command of the giant military. It's like, okay, this yeah, is the YA the, series. <laughs> there are a few moments in Ever Show where the YA ness comes through really hard. Yeah. Yeah, but like back anyway. to Cytonic for a moment. I did kind of miss the. I was kind of wishing since Cytonic got to spoil the Ever Show ending with the planet. I was kind of hoping that uh, Evershaw would get to spoil the Cytonic ending with Spencer arriving. Yeah, I kind of expected that too. Mm-hmm. Um, but you found that uh, Jancy and Darcy said that Evershaw finishes before Interlude 3 in Cytonic. Yep. Yeah. Which is very interesting. Yeah, I was waiting the whole time for that. Uh, Jorgen like freeing Spencer uh, like in th- that scene with Braid uh, from Zytonic mm. that Jorgen is being like super loud Zytonically like yeah. I was waiting for that the whole uh, novella and I was like oh I guess this didn't happen yeah Fuck. I was almost expecting like there being a Delver attack and some of the junk the Delvers were pulling in into that battle at Surehold would be like happening concurrently with the one of the novellas like th- this is just my mind's my imagined book of dual viewpoint cytonic right like you would probably want those mm-hmm. to intermingle and it didn't uh, that's fine evershore is still great you probably don't want to have more uh plot elements in the end of evershore to be yeah. honest yeah so i do i do kind of wonder if the decision to like end it before the third interlude was kind of motivated by the fact that Jorgen had some stuff to do in Cytonic that would bog down Evershore with even more like stuff that isn't even relevant directly to Evershore. Mm. I don't know, but I'm I'm just glad they didn't kill Cobb off screen because I I was gonna riot. Uh, but I I don't know about you all, but given the fact that Cytonic just has Detritus orbiting another place. I feel like my recommendation is maybe read all the novellas first and then Cytonic. That seems like 100%. the best plan. Yeah. 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 Especially since Evershore spoils Cytonic a lot less than Cytonic spoils Evershore. Oh, yeah. First mm. of all, and yeah. second, it is earlier. And third, when it gets released in the bundle, then the other two novellas also, you know, take place earlier. So it's. Yeah. I, I don't think you should split up reading the novellas. It, even though it is cool to read Evershore, knowing that he will become Admiral, like that is, that's kind of an interesting reading experience. But it's very easy to argue that that's a spoiler <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Not only a spoiler, but it does like also like take away part of the stakes in Evershore uh, because well, you yeah, no, you know, other than the fact that Jorgen is gonna survive, well, sure he's a main character, but still. <laughs> Oh, that, Characters don't uh, die in this series, Veronica. 
Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Oh, so Unless they're Jorgen's parents. White aren't characters. Yeah, Just wait but... until they walk back on screen in Defiant. We, we, we need to progress Jorgen's character, so it's really in service of keeping the main characters alive and their character progression that we have to kill off the family member or mental figures. <laughs> so it's like, come on. <laughs> hey, at, at, at least it wasn't the love interest this time. I mean, that's true. That's true. Oh, oh, don't toy with me, Defiant. Um, don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, I I think my recommendation would be read all the Skyward uh, Flight novellas before Cytonic when the collection comes out. I do think it's a bit yeah. weird that we got Evershore later. I think Jancy had said that they were thinking about putting Evershore earlier, but like there just wasn't time. Mm. I, I vaguely remember. Yeah, I I think yeah. so. We well. We'll ask Jancy next week uh, yeah. on the show, so you'll mm. you'll hear it from her. So I think, like a while ago, like earlier today, someone asked, like, should I read uh, Evershore before Cytonic? And I I didn't put much thought into it. Uh huh. I was like, well, just do it in publisher. That's the way they were. Um, like that's what they out. said. Like, and I made it like for a reason. And now thinking about it and talking about it, I'm like. That doesn't really make that much sense. Like, why did you do it that way? Like, I get logistics and all that, but especially because Evershore Redon is better to read before Cytonic. <laughs> Redon to Evershore has a big cliffhanger, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of weird to then read Cytonic. Like, it's just kind of odd, you know, because you don't get any payout. Like, it's just not relevant in Cytonic at all, right? Uh, so I feel yeah. like the ideal thing is either reading Cytonic or the novellas all together. Uh, I mean, to be fair, you could also make the same argument after Star Sight that is like, there's kind of a cliffhanger. Why don't you want to read Cytonic first rather than having, you know, mm. the bunch of stuff mm -hmm. with the Skyward Flight? So I, I mm -hmm. suppose it goes both ways in a sense. Um, yeah, I, th I think either way we can probably agree that Splitting novellas to insert Cytonic in between is probably not the optimal that reading does experience. Honestly, sound like the worst way to set it up, but I, I realize that Chancy and Brandon and everyone, they spent a lot of work to get all these novellas out. I very much understand that. And, and like it's fine, but I do think that is probably the worst order. I don't know. Yeah. I think yeah. now that if you still haven't read uh, the novellas, now that both all three novellas and Cytonic is out, you you will probably have a better experience reading either nove either all novellas first and then Cytonic, or Cytonic first and all novellas after that. It, we we basically make a flow chart mm -hmm. that says mm -hmm. at the yeah. end of Star Sight. Did you really miss Skyward Flight characters? If so, read Skyward Flight novellas first. If you're really into Spencer, read Cytonic first. Easy. Nice. Yeah. Though, okay. if you're listening to this and you haven't read... Yeah, like, welcome to the show. Like, you are like, oh, <laughs> why? Welcome to the Cytonic here. part of the Evershore show. Uh, welcome. Uh, well, I, I, I hope we've helped you decide what reading order to do through these things. <laughs> that is Great. a good point. Great. Fantastic. Yeah, not not the smartest thing I ever said. <laughs> I mean, we all were kind of making that point. So yeah. it's just mm. maybe we maybe we need a Skyward reading order separate video that, you know, doesn't have a ton of spoilers in it. Maybe we need to do <laughs> there that. There you go. Nice. I don't think I have more about Cytonic, uh, but but I mostly just wanted to bring it up because Jorgen became Admiral. Like and we already knew that that was going to happen. <laughs> like, we knew that. It's Titanic. Yeah. But there's so much going on in Evershore. What What else do you, what you guys want to talk about? He, uh, what? Well, I know Alla didn't like a thing. <laughs> so why, why, why don't you tell us about it? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Let's so talk about what we don't like. Let's go. In the grand tradition of me disliking some romantic elements in those stories. <laughs> uh, it's kind of I would I would have ranted about it in Redon if I was on the yes, Redon episode. Yes. I think scheduling just didn't work. Yeah. Yeah, I I wasn't a train while you were recording and oh, okay. I don't think you would like the audio quality. No, of me on the no, train. I wouldn't. Nor would any of them 
<laughs> Look, if you didn't like the bells on the state of Sanderson, you you would not like train yeah. being on a train. I, I think we still discussed it because like I this is also a thing I don't like. And I think oh. I brought it up. In, I, I don't, don't even remember. I don't remember the the shark episode. I, I am do sorry. Remember you talking about it, but not really in depth. Yeah, that was we like didn't two months ago. Time on it. I don't remember. Oh. Anyway, please explain, Ala. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, there is a moment in Redone where, like, Alanik and Arturo having are having the private conversation, and they are clearly having like romance flags all over the place. Yes, that's true. Yes, and I was just yeah. not super fond of it because. <laughs> uh, earlier, earlier though, we we get this whole discussion about like how uh, Urdail culture treats like romans differently, and also I'm just a bit tired of like the characters being paired up in relationships because like Spencer and Jorgen, you know, their main characters. Of course, they're going to hook up. It's YA. Uh, <laughs> FM and Rig. <laughs> FM and Rig. I. <laughs> it's true. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. It is. FM and Rig were refreshing for being a well written romance compared to what yeah. Jorgen and Spencer had yeah, at yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just as a quick aside, I still feel like the Jorgen side of this romance is written way better than Spencer's. Yes, I, I agree. Like Jancy is a way better romance writer than Brandon. Uh, and yes, yes. I that's true. hope that for Defiant, uh, Brandon, like, consults Jancy to do well, kind of like what betas do but for romance in particular to get that right because they're going to be back together yeah and we, so, we have yeah. to see spencer and jorgen uh together in defiant yes yeah very okay, important arthur and alanik so yes uh, at this point i was because i did talk about in in sandwich about my irritation with uh, like the lack of representation in the story. So I was like, okay, here's another boy and girl and they are having another scene and oh yeah, we're getting another romance between boy and girl in mm -hmm. this series. And you know, and I also, I guess I was just a little bit irritated because yet another time we have uh, the the lady protagonist in a story who just has to hook up with a guy who has to have a romance arc and it just sort of grated on me. One problem I had with Urdail in, Re, uh, in Redone was that they were kind of coming too close to just being purple humans. Yeah. And because they are very culturally close to uh, to humans who like they have they have a two party parliament system. They have sports, they are human and in appearance and now uh, and now Arturo is flirting with one of them. So you okay, know. well, you put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess because like Kitson are very much like you know a sci-fi because Urdail are sci-fi elves and Kitson are sci-fi Kitsune. Yeah, uh, but right, yes, that's exactly still, what they are. Yeah, you know they are still like non-human even if they walked on two feet. And there was the whole like culture shock of the yeah. size difference. But Urdail. Yeah. Uh, or they were a lot more like humans. So the idea that Alanik would just behave in this relationship like a purple human is kind of irks me. So the uh, so the fact that Evershore kind of continued this trend of like, no, they're not going to be friends. They are actually going to be a romantic couple annoyed me because because there are like two to the book's credit, it does have like friendships between two people of opposite genders, like. Mm -hmm. FM and Jorgen are never FM shipped by the story, which I very much appreciate. That's yeah. true. That's that's a very important point. Uh, yeah, but I wish we had more of that. So that's also why I was kind of disappointed that Arturo and Alanik were being, you know, strangled by the romance plot. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I also just kind of wanted to not work out this relationship to to not work out. Not because I hate Arturo, mind you, or not because I'm shipping him with another character. Just for the record, I, I don't hate either Alanik or Arturo. I just want them to not work out to showcase that those aren't the same cultures and or they aren't just purple humans and that they have different understanding because we know from Redon that they have different understanding of like how families and relationships work. Like they don't, Alanik doesn't think in terms of like boyfriend, girlfriend, partner. They, she thinks in terms of like mate pair, like someone, which to me implies someone you have kids with, not necessarily like dating or going to the movies or whatever Urdail do to hang out. 
<laughs> go to sports events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Gotta go to the sports events. Once we overthrow the superiority, we gotta go to the sporting events. And then Spencer can be the best at that. Uh, oh, oh my God. Uh, but I hear what you're saying, and I can see That's- why you wouldn't like that. I kind of love it, though. I, see, like, I also disliked it. Because, like, oh. as soon as, like, Arturo made the comment of, like, oh, like, I broke up with my girlfriend. Or, like, she dumped me or something. I'm like, oh, God. Like, he's going to end up in a yep. romance with Alani. Because, and part of it, um, there was a large segment of the fandom that wanted Alani to be queer. Which... Yep didn't happen and no. and jancy was jancy didn't want the first canonical queer person in the side over to be about an this. alien yeah it's, which it's, is very valid i think that's very valid that doesn't mean she had to be in a relationship at all it's like yeah like yeah. i i'm totally here for an alanique arturo friendship which Same. like might actually be the case because like they are not in a romantic relationship yet arturo just wants them to be in an art romantic relationship and i hope arturo does not get his way See, I, I just, yeah i love the antagonism to to lovers thing and like mm-hmm. i feel like it was written very well and i'm glad mm-hmm. like it did it hasn't gone like all full steam ahead because like fm yeah. rig that went pretty full steam uh, ahead like they they obviously talked about yeah, that. Yeah, but that in, had uh, also been set up since uh Skyward, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. Uh but I don't know. I I I dig it. Uh let's let's guess, let's, let's pair yeah, everyone I, up and kill half of them in Defiant. Oh, I guess God. for me no. like <laughs> My my trouble yeah. with explaining it is like there isn't like one issue I have with this ship. There is the fact that every protagonist in this story so far has ended up in a romantic relationship which you know, by this point, it's starting to feel repetitive. And also, as someone who personally just isn't interested in it, it kind of annoys me when it feels like uh, why stories just have feel the obligation to pair up everyone with a partner by the end of it. Because, Ala, you're aromantic, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I guess it is, like, also part of it that, mm-hmm. you know, I have... Li- I have been surrounded by this ex- this pressure to like, you know, when will you get a boyfriend? So right. seeing the the fiction also <laughs> treat its right, protagonists yeah. in the shape of and, like, when will you get a boyfriend? Is a bit irksome. And and especially in YA, there there is the tendency to like, yeah. we need everyone to be shipped. Yeah. We need and I that. think, and I do personally think like as a wider YA trend, it is damaging because it's kind of telling people that you know yeah. it's nor you. It's standard and normal that you should be in a relationship when that n- doesn't necessarily yeah. have to be the case. Yeah, that's true. I I, Which, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, so that's one for thing. your age, like for like YA audiences, right? Like that's I mean, one of the things that's with like YA and media in general. Like you do see like very like young people, and even around you, like t- it's happened to me. Like you do see lots of people like entering into relationships. And it's everyone goes at their own pace, and I do think that YA needs to, uh, like, think about that. Yeah, yeah, more. that's fair. Uh, just to be clear, of like being queer or not, everyone does go at their own pace. Yeah, so. yeah. And just to be clear, I don't. I'm not going to say that if you like the fact that Alani and Arturo are having a relationship, you're some kind of terrible person who is perpetuating terrible stereotypes or whatever. Oh, yeah. Like, if you like it, then. You know, good for you. The book is doing something you like. Yeah, it's at just, least it works yeah. for someone. Hey, it, yeah. it, it, honestly, it totally works for me. Like, I, I think Jancy is just really good at writing the romance where I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. I, I can see where yeah. where mm-hmm. this is going. Yeah. That yeah. I'm like, I dig it. Whereas I feel like, uh, Ala, you're definitely coming. It's like, oh my God, we're pairing another person. And so you're just... Yeah, yeah. I've, yeah. I like how John C. writes romance, but I think I have a bit of a romance overdose. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's fair. I, I also think that a story where two characters who have some level of initial attraction end up not getting together would be an interesting subversion, and also them get, becoming friends would be, you know, also a cool thing to have. Like because that's that what sometimes happens in real life that people who 
you know, one side has some romantic attraction doesn't mean they have to get together at the end. And and I mean, lots of people in, you know, late teenage years, uh, they those relationships usually don't work out. And obviously in YA, yeah. they tend to. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. But like, I can also see why YA, it's a sort of wish fulfillment thing where it's like, oh, I don't yeah. have a romantic partner and I want a romantic partner. So I'm reading things about uh, uh, people getting romantic yeah. partners and you kind of sort of mm -hmm. live through that. Right. Uh, but it totally yeah. makes sense if, if you're not yeah. down with that. Mm -hmm. And I think an interesting alternative uh, to that uh, would be them getting together, exploring a relationship between cultures that are, well, on the surface, so different because I mean, Alanik isn't a human, even if kind of <laughs> like mm -hmm. purple yeah. human. Uh, and then them realizing that it's not going to work out. I think that's also a good thing to portray in YA. And it that, would be, a yeah, that could be I, fun. I would be fine with that that's a problem. I do think Evershore, I think it's important given what was set up with Redon that their relationship should have progressed in Evershore. So, like, I, I would probably have been disappointed if, like, we saw them i guess there would be a way to get them to break up not that they were together right uh in evershore but to me given the promises that were in read on it's like okay we are going to see that in the future right it has just occurred to me that i think like one of the reasons why i'm not so keen on this is also what i was talking about earlier about urdile being basically purple humans yeah 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 that i have a, i have a feeling like if if Arturo fell for some alien that was less humanoid, I think I might have liked it better because, like, Let, let's get an Arturo mm. resonant romance here. Like, let's 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 get into that. Like, I want to see how that yeah, works. I mean, <laughs> a romantic relationship doesn't have to be sexual. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like physical attraction. So, if okay. it was a romance between like a human and figment sapient crystals or yeah. figments right right write <laughs> that fanfic everyone i i want to see uh, an arturo fic or we could just have a jorgen fic uh of <laughs> jorgen and figment easy let's, let's get that yeah i think i would actually like this more because it would be something more novel than a boy and a girl get mm -hmm. together sure. because they are both you know basically humans yeah yeah uh and i think that's fair. It's it's always tricky though, in we, you wanting to show aliens be alien, but yeah, if you make them too I'll, I'll, alien, then uh -huh. it's hard to mm -hmm. empathize with them and like understand it. Like obviously it can be done, but yeah, it, given Redon had so much to do, I'm not surprised they went in this way. Yeah. Where, Whereas uh, the Kitson culture, I do think was done better. Uh, and so I think, like, they, yeah. they definitely felt unique. Uh, obviously, their shortness and size is hilarious. And I love that Juno can just be like, oh, I'm in the starship with Jorgen. Like, that's adorable. Uh, mm -hmm. But even separate from their size, they, they think about things differently. They're, they, mm -hmm. they have a different culture. Uh, and and I thought that was done well. See, like I, I found the Kitson culture still to be very, like very like similar to some human cultures. Yeah, like, sure. I got that like a very true. strong like mm -hmm. Japanese, yeah, like, yeah, Asian mm -hmm. vibe because like there's the stereotype of like honor. Sure. And it's yeah. like from my limited understanding of Asian cultures, it feels like Jancy like drew on that without being horribly racist about it <laughs> as often happens when um white people write asian characters to be fair not uh not only uh, jancy like i feel like this was brandon's intent with the kids yes. initially yes. so that she, very she's much building on that right in Star Star. yeah yeah and also um, like the kids soon like are part of like japanese yeah right, right 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 yeah, yeah yeah and it's like so like I, i'd be interested to see like a if you are japanese or, comment like, below if you're or, japanese like, tell me your like, feelings on the like, kitchen i i i'd be interested like somebody from one of those cultures like is it offensive like i don't think it is yeah and i 
but yeah, like but- I think it was very done very well. But again, uneducated. It, mm-hmm. it can be yeah, tricky sometimes. Yeah, yeah. we don't see. really have any you know Japanese representation on Shardcast. <laughs> yeah, it, it, no. it, it's funny because when I was in Japan in 2017, uh, I was trying to find fantasy books. And not a lot of Brandon's books were there. Like, Way of Kings was very hard for me to find in bookstores. And no. I had it explained to me that, uh, I mean, they they more read manga than, like, long mm-hmm. fantasy, yeah, science fiction I, fantasy I, novels, which is interesting. Yeah, the same thing, like, when I was searching for cover art for Coppermind, mm. uh, Japan, from Japan, I only found Mistborn and Way of Kings. Yeah, I didn't even find Words mm-hmm. of Radiance. And, and they didn't even have science fiction fantasy sections in bookstores that I went to in Tokyo. I looked. Yeah, I, did. <laughs> I don't believe a Japanese translation of Words of Radiance even exists. Yeah, apparently it just doesn't sell well there uh, mm-hmm. for yeah. that reason. So so if you are Japanese and listening to this podcast, please, please comment uh, below. I, because I do know yeah. there are Wheel of Time fans from Japan. Mm. Uh, because oh, yeah. I know what I'm I meant. Sure. They've posted many times like the art for the Japanese translations of Wheel of Time, but I don't know about Cosmere. So yeah, yeah. I just I just think Storm uh, Way of Kings didn't sell well. It, it doesn't help that Way of Kings was split in the two copies and, and they, were, they were like each uh, section was expensive. So free, anyway, free, what, free copies even. Yeah, so a little off track, but I I, I really enjoyed the Kitson culture. I liked their politicking. Like I, some, sometimes I get a bit down on uh, Brandon stories dealing with politicking, and I think Evershore had a very good level of politics being relevant, but not the whole book devolving into politics. <laughs> like oh, I think I, this was a really good balance here. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love politicking in my sci-fi and fantasy <laughs> stories. I, I, sorry, I guess I'm more just sensitive to the fact that Brandon consistently wants things to seem to go like, here are all the factions and let's unite all the factions and things and and things like that. (laughs) That And I think I'm getting just sick of that. That's a trope that I'm kind of over. So like here we have Goro who's like, yeah, the humans invade invaded our planet. Why are we helping the humans? That's insane. And you know, he he's he's a mini samurai wanting to fight, uh, and I find that yeah. hilarious. Uh, no, yeah. he had uh, a champion. Heather. Oh, he had a champion. He, was he had a lady champion who was very cool, and I don't. Oh, that's it. right. Oh, that is right. Yeah. yeah and Heather, uh, between Sky and, and C on the Discord. Oh yes. Did a drawing, and it's amazing. Ooh, ooh. Hopefully, I can put that on screen for you um, now. I thought it was- Juno drawing, not Goro or the champion. Either way, let's put a kiss in the armor. There's definitely a Juno drawing. Yeah. Because I've seen it. It's awesome. Why not both? This story didn't dwell so much on Senate politicking because we we had the first Senate scene, like it was relevant, but it didn't encompass the whole story. So I I really liked that. Uh, So I'm maybe I'm just sensitive to the politicking. So I I really liked the Kitson culture, politics, how Goro, like Goro's progression in the story was cool. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll fight with you guys. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, I I also really enjoyed Kitson culture. It kind of, it gave me the vibes like maybe they are just completely wrong, but I got the vibes from from the kids and that there were a society that aren't, that only acquired this advanced technology recently. So hmm. the what we would call the societal advancements or whatever that would make them like a stock science fiction culture did not <laughs> yet caught up with that. Because hmm. like again to to compare it to Redom, like the the Urdile definitely. You know, they have their trees they live in, but, you know, they also have ships they move through and spaceship pilots, etc. And uh, with Kitson, I definitely got an impression of society that was a bit lower tech, Mm. which, you know, they still have those flying discs they use to to move around places. Yeah. They still fight with swords. I can see why you had that impression, especially because, like, it felt like the Senate building and things were like old buildings, right? And so mm-hmm. it felt like we weren't in a lot of like high tech Kitson buildings. Uh, but mm-hmm. I think it was like a mix. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. I, I can see why you got yeah. that impression. Yeah, I, that's like one of the things I liked, like the technological mix. Like they have flying saucers they travel on, but they also challenge each other to duels using swords and you yeah, know. yeah, 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 swords with power armor. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you gotta Which have like, the vibro blades from Star Wars. Yeah. And it's like there we go. The nice. impression I had was that. Like, they have a strong appreciation of the past, yeah. which is like mm-hmm. why, like, they had such a strong like dynastic tradition, the monarchy. Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. like, I like. I don't know if them losing their monarchy is necessarily the best thing. Like, because like they they are not human. Like, we should not presume that democracy is best for them. I'm also a romanticist that thinks monarchy is cool, but like not <laughs> actually for humans because like problematic uh yeah i mean it it is easy to romanticize the like Mm -hmm. but great kings can do great things you know it's easy to romanticize um cuff cuff dalinar (laughs) well i mean yeah uh but i i think i i want to connect in some cytonic stuff right here so we'll we'll do some more cytonic spoilers absolutely not because Never again. no, you missed your shot. Sh- sh- no, uh, because <laughs> Hesho's back, right? Yes, he is. Mm-hmm. So I am kind of curious. I I don't think we're gonna see this in Defiant at all, uh, because I think Defiant has a lot to do. So I don't mm-hmm. think uh, Hesho's relationship with the kids and Senate is really going to be explored in Defiant. Maybe later. There have been hints that I, there will be some later. Uh, I mean, Skyward there's been adults. explicit confirmation. There That's true. Worse. That's true. I need a Hesho novella. That would be like that would be pretty sweet, favorite. honestly. Yeah, because he that like remind me. Am I remembering correctly? At the end of Cytonic, he decided to like stay incognito and like not reannounce yes. his presence because like he there is a moment I where mean, he talks to Gorgon and says like give this say. coded message to Kauri and she yeah. will get what yeah. I mean what what I mean y- yes yeah. like, so it's like the kids are not gonna know he's alive like like it, it's going to be very obvious because yeah. of the, the the coded message is like it's a a cultural reference that they're going to understand but it's, I think it's also a cultural like a coded message that like Hey, I'm alive. Don't worry. I'm not coming back. My impression was that on the message was meant just for Kauri. I I don't remember if if she was supposed to pass it on to the rest of the Kitson. I don't remember. But but he went back to the somewhere with Spencer, right? Yeah, yeah he yeah. did because yeah, yeah. he talks with Jorgen at the end of it. Like yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, when yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, he, right, when right, he right, asked right. Jorgen to pass on the message. Right. So he is back in the summer. I'm just wondering, like, I don't think most of Ever Shore will be informed that he's alive. Probably not, but like, I think the Senate will know, and the Senate will realize, like, we can't tell the whole planet the king's alive because, like, that probably would just a bad issues. idea. Uh, yeah. I am yeah. I mean, interested to see how that evolves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and that, speaking of like kids and culture, also no need for satanic spoilers anymore um yeah i really like like the culture clash not only in this but in Redon. like sure Redon was more similar um to a human culture but i do like that uh dealing with the kids and forced well skyward flight to act in a different way and also like even in the fighting styles like we've seen a little bit of that in um star sight but we saw like Jorgen struggling, like, well, I am dealing with human pilots, I'm dealing with kitten pilots, and now I'm dealing with her Dale pilot, and I need to coordinate all of them. Yeah. And so I really, really like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, with with Jorgen like commanding everything, I think it's also yeah. worth talking about his promotion at the end of the book. Yeah. Which was the most way thing under the sun. Uh, the, yeah, because the- this was another thing Jess had an issue with. The like the more the further she got away from the book, she's like, that this is this is this is a little unrealistic and this is very YA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because there is like for some reason like that whenever Jorgen interacts with the uh the F- DDF high command, the book suddenly gets very like YA tropes. Like, <laughs> stop. 
like let's let's take a moment for Admiral <laughs> Stoff, who is you know, who decided he's going to carry all the YA tropes on his shoulders. <laughs> Look, he, he's got to do heavy moment. lifting, lifting all those tropes. Like this man, this is the most like useless adult in this entire story. I guess he, his biggest contribution to the plot is that he stays out of the way. I, I, I do think... Even though there's a lot of like, oh, adults letting the kids go by. And Jess was telling me like, oh, Cobb's just afraid of the unknown with dealing these with these aliens. That is kind of weak sauce. I it does sort of make sense to me that if your whole life you're like, we are on detritus. We're fighting the Krell. And like, I, I this is this is what I've been trained to do. That. Being out of your element with these uh, wide-scale galactic things and other species is challenging. And so I can somewhat understand Stoff being like, well, this idiot seems, this young idiot seems to have a plan. It'll probably fail, but then I'll blame him for it. And then, hey, great, mm -hmm. cool. Uh, and okay. Cobb being afraid and wanting to step down because Jorgen can deal with all these races and he's not very good at it. I, I expected Cobb to continue to be the one responsible adult. So I was a bit disappointed that he just offloaded the job on Jorgen, who, you know, we did just, you know, Jorgen, this 18 year old kid who is clearly <laughs> still dealing with PTSD from his let's parents give it, let's give him the admiralty. from his eyes. Easy. <laughs> and who is struggling with the weight of responsibility and we spent the entire book yeah. with he like being terrified of how he's going to screw yeah, up and get the book's everyone over. killed. It's all good now. The book's <laughs> over. Yes. Let's, <laughs> let's put Do him hope. in charge. Yeah. To be yeah. honest, it didn't super bother me because I never thought Cobb wanted to be Admiral to begin yeah. with. I like, mean, he never the did. Beginning that's totally of Star true. Sight, when it's like, oh, Cobb's Admiral now? I'm like, okay. That's, he, he has never wanted didn't that Didn't think job. he would want that. So it's like, oh yeah, like, Jorgen's doing fine. Like, he's got this in hand. Like, uh, I don't want to be in charge. I, I don't think Cobb... Like, Cobb's not going to be the decision maker, but I think, like, Spencer and Jorgen might ask him ad for advice. Like, I think yeah. he's still going to exist. And I do he's think... He's not dead. That, no, I, thankfully. Well, no, I don't think. I hope uh, that in Defiant, they have this, like, stronger, like, council-type scenario where... It's mm. not only one person making decisions, and it also isn't only Spence and isn't only Jorgen. But it's them working together. They have Cobb, they have FM. They have a big group of people with different strengths that can help them make decisions as a group. To be honest, not and and the allies FM. of the Erdale and the Kitson, right? Also, like, also. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but so yeah, this I was like the... We see that. Yeah. Uh, you know, with all the like wild stuff that's happening in Evershore, Somehow, Jorgen being promoted to admiral was the one moment when I actually stopped far. and asked. When I actually stopped and asked, "What, what the hell is happening here?" The, the, the planet teleporting. Sure, great, cool, nice. Uh, I guess you needed a lot of slugs. What's going on with that? Sure, okay. Jorgen becoming admiral. That's a bridge too far. That I, that that is quite funny. I will say though. I still love that scene where it's like, you're promoted to vice admiral. Same. Also, I'm stepping down. <laughs> and Jorgen's like, wait, what? <laughs> Amazing. I, I love that scene, scene. actually. I, it is definitely a bit of YA suspend your disbelief a bit. But yeah. you know what? Jorgen did great. Okay. Yeah. He he killed it. Uh, killed that superiority. Nice. Uh, and he did good. Uh, and... <laughs> He, he really came to his own being a leader, and so it worked for me, but uh, I can see why one person would... Uh, I can see why a person would find this a, a bit... Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's sure a decision. Yeah. yeah. But he also has always been a good leader. It's not like that. He has always been a good leader. Where yeah. uh, the character... Like, is, is the opposite of that and then becomes the leader yeah, without right, the exactly. natural progression to become a leader. He did have a lot of progression. Jorgen always was that way. And so yeah. this is just a bigger role than he had before. Yeah. 
I think like if, if it was like Spencer who got promoted yeah. to Vice Admiral, I would be actively like I would actually actively dislike it instead of finding it hilarious because yeah, yeah. Spencer's that, personality is not leader. Yeah, if if the reaction is okay, that's a bit preposterous, but sure, rather than that is just stupid, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um because like I do because like it does sound awesome with Jorgen in command yeah. and then Spencer them power coupling it. Like, yeah, let's go. That sounds amazing. Give me that. It's also I like mean, it's it, it's the second coming of Vin and Ellen. To I was about to say the same <laughs> kind thing. Of, kind of. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I was about to say the same thing. That's like then the girl being this super powerful, like. <laughs> More like person who goes out and does stuff while the the guy who also has the powers but sits in the big chair and gives orders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing! That I is do, I do, true. I, mean, no. that is I do hope Jorgen gets like a big fancy admiral chair. Like that's yeah. a necessary part of yeah. sci-fi stories. As far yeah, as I'm he'll concerned. get one, but it'll be kits in size, so it's just not the same. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, the Kitson will make it for him, and he'll think it's a cup holder. <laughs> <laughs> the royal throne! There you go. The ho- their royal, co- their royal coffiness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So true, though. But I, I-, I will say, Ebershar with Cytonic, I'm very excited for Defiant. Yeah. I'm... I'm- mm-hmm. Very excited. I think the only thing I'm worried about with Defiant is how Brandon is going to recap people who haven't read the novellas. Yeah. I, it's just going to be weird going through and being like, what happened to Cobb? What happened to what happened to these other things? Why is Yargon like, in charge? Why, why are there like, so many slugs? I feel yeah, like yeah. it's not that. Because like, if you, the things that we have that Defiant has to like recap aren't that like many like all we have to say is like we now have alliance with Kitson and Urdile we've managed to reactivate some of the Tritus' systems and surprise it teleports that'll be useful uh, and also you know appendix to the former we also discovered that there are lots of different varieties of slugs which is something that isn't difficult to establish given what you know what we learn elsewhere like obviously I mean, the yeah. end of Star Sight with Jorgen discovering mm-hmm. the slugs, like yeah. it's it's there, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and and also like, hey, if you're nice to the slugs, they do stuff for you. You don't have to traumatize them. <laughs> yeah. 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 And yeah. also like a bunch of people are in, are in relationships there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which considering how yeah. clueless Spencer is about that, I don't think we even have to establish this properly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Just have it happen and Spencer wondering, like, uh, no, why are Rick showing, showing up and eyes yelling at other? her? Rick showing okay, up and yelling at her for, like, hey, you were supposed to talk to FM about, like, us getting together. And, oh, like, that'd be good. <laughs> that. that oh, oh, that'd be good. That'd be good. I changed my mind. I need this now. <laughs> that, that, oh, that'd be good. Ooh, that's solid. Uh, also, what I want is Doom Slug talking with the other slugs. That's like top on my list like how will doom yes. slug integrate with all the other slugs i mean probably not spence is probably going to be doing her own crap as she usually is right uh but another flight school with delver <laughs> slug flight school yeah isn't that the novellas yeah, <laughs> yeah. Slug yeah flight school. very true <laughs> we we need to go to old earth and defiant and then have flight school of those humans there who are also locked in the nowhere, which Jorgen will help. <laughs> Easy. No, actually, Old Earth just in the nowhere. Easy. Failed it. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. I feel like we have really just gas pedaled through this whole thing, which maybe fits really well for Evershore because there's a lot that happened and it's all like, wow, that, that was, those were sure things. Wow, that's crazy, right? Um, I feel like that's what we're doing. Is there anything else? Yeah, like things you wanted to talk about with Evershore. Anything at all? So if we're talking about like very minor things, that's uh-huh. this is super tiny, but there were moments I felt 
a bit uneasy reading uh, reading Evershore, which is an issue I also had with the other novellas and even the books, which is this military is best culture. Like mm, Jorgen sure. many times, mm. the, the stories treat National Assembly like the civilian leadership of the Tritus as something that's an annoyance, that's yes. an irritant, yes. a problem, a roadblock, and they screw things up. Uh, while the brave DDF is full of, you know, occasional idiots and stuffs. <laughs> That's why Jorgen needs to be also, in charge, because he's not an idiot. Easy. But also, there is this persistent, like, theme throughout the stories and the novellas that uh, all would be better if the military was allowed to, to do what it wants. Yeah. Which is mm. something that, you know, maybe I wouldn't have picked up on it, like, a few years ago, but right now it has me a bit uneasy like i'm sure this is not like the intended message i don't think either jancy or brandon are like yeah, yeah, yeah. in favor of you know mil military dictatorships <laughs> yeah. but it, i feel like it's a theme that kind of unintendedly snuck its way into mm -hmm. the story yeah Pr presumably mm -hmm. i am assuming the main conflict with the superiority and delvers is resolved and defiant Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So probably. wouldn't it be cool to have a novella after that that's like dealing with, okay, maybe we don't need so yes. much military stuff. Like right now, there it, it yes. is a still a very stressful situation uh, mm -hmm. where like the, the superiority is a massive threat, right? Uh, and so I can see why it's led this way, but it would be nice to see the aftermath after. Yes. Crisis Definitely. is and over and seeing also, that society struggle with that, you know? That aftermath is not easy to deal with. And I no. I'm like speaking about this as someone from a country that has dealt oh. with this for 50 years. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Co Colombia I, yeah. Is, has been a, a fun place. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Oof. yeah, so a bit of context. So I am uh, Colombian and the well, civil... <laughs> history is complicated you can go look it up <laughs> but essentially there was a point in time where the like intra-party violence was getting out of hand and so they're like okay let's make this agreement uh to like hand off like each uh like elections like one party and the next the other one rather than traditional votes and also they um oh like alternating one it? person yeah okay and they there was this thing called the Frente Nacional, and they put uh, General called Rojas Pinilla in charge, and that's turned into a pseudo -milita military dictatorship. It wasn't as oh, bad great. as many in uh, the rest of Latin America because it wasn't a true military dictatorship, but th that had its own problems. Yeah, <laughs> the, there's a lot of there was a lot of problems with that, and now. Uh, since the peace process was signed in 2016, if I'm getting my dates right, there have been a lot of like implications in like dealing uh, with that. The um, hip, and so like getting things to work out, like with that, like not only like dissidents and also, well, making sure all the logistics work out because that's hard. Mm -hmm. And so peace doesn't necessarily mean everything is perfect again and there are yes. lots of implications to deal with and so i would definitely really like like a novella series like post defiant post well whatever ends up happening with a superiority and the ddf well there is no need to keep like there's no need for the charge to only serve the military anymore right and like sure we can have a military but that doesn't I mean it's the most important like organism like on the whole planet and the characters yeah like dealing with that and returning uh to civilian life in certain ways and that that'd be cool to like see some of that disputer stuff eventually coming mm -hmm. up again perhaps yeah. um mm -hmm. and yeah because it would be good to see this aftermath of peace because this series has a bit of a intriguing not so great habit of like showing civilian governments as being either obstructive or actively hostile, because we have the National Assembly on the Tritus who, you know, is alternately obstructive and hostile, depending on who's the protagonist. Uh, we have the Senate on uh, 
we have a Senate on Evershore, which is uh, shown as getting bogged down in details and getting obstructive by being inefficient. We have the whatever they call it. <laughs> like a very realistic <laughs> representation of politics to me. And I know, and that's I true. <laughs> you know, there is a trend like we have Urdile Parliament, which, you know, in read on that parliament is ruled by a bunch of like, how do I put it without swears? <laughs> uh, superiority bootlickers. Yeah, there you go. Sure. And of course, we have the superiority where uh, we see the government as a whole is perpetuating this campaign against humans and lesser species. And yeah. our main r- civilian representatives are Winzik, who is like <laughs> civilian overseer of military and also kind of mainish villain, and Kuna, who is consistently shown as being actually not that good at diplomacy and consistently calling people <laughs> yeah. lesser species. Yeah. I, yeah. I I don't mean to, th- that is all a great point, but Kuna really has not done like anything yeah. here other than yeah. like yeah. sort of inflamed tensions almost. And it's yeah. like oh, like yeah. inadvertently. Mm-hmm. But yeah. uh, I I've... do want to defend the Kitson Senate because in their in their defense, it's like it takes like twelve hours. Like it's less than a day. I would expect that's pretty efficient, to make honestly. Yes, you yeah. useful decisions mm-hmm. in that if, amount if of you time. You have a, a yeah. large group of people <laughs> trying to decide anything is really hard, especially mm-hmm. when things get political and you know there's like yes. lots of things at stake. Like, go go mm-hmm. get ten people and decide where lunch is. Like, it's kind of complicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the, the kids on the politics uh, side. Yeah, that happened here a while ago either. And I was I was eternally frustrated because after like a day of talks with the people that are protesting and the government and all that, and they're like, okay, no, nothing turned out. Let's keep protesting. And I was like, it doesn't, it takes more than a day, <laughs> at least a week. Yeah. It, you don't yeah. come to decisions like that in a day. These are long talks. The, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The Kids and Senate is probably the most competent civilian government in mm-hmm. yeah. Cytoverse we've seen so far. And, and they have like the they... least experience. <laughs> they have the least experience. They're they're, they're not corrupted yeah. by politics. Okay. They... And the, and also the most we see of them, like the longest scene we have with the kids and senate, is them getting bogged down in the details of like procedure and protocol. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I would. I am a bit uncomfortable with the how negative the portrayal of civilian authorities is versus how positive the portrayal of military authorities is. Yeah, it, it's it's always tricky because I feel like uh, Skyward and stuff is very much space fantasy, right? And we we want to kind of have a Star Warsy thing where it's like, oh, fun space battles and things, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, where people can die sometimes. Uh, and and so I get that. I get what the story is trying to do. Like, obviously, I don't think this is, you know an intentional thing but it would be yeah, interesting yeah. to see some of this aftermath though i have no idea what the future skyward flight novellas mm-hmm. would be yeah like like i said i don't think that i sincerely don't think either jancy or brandon are actually yeah. saying that military dictatorships are a superior form of government <laughs> no uh, it, yeah it, like 100 percent, no <laughs> it definitely feels like it's a thing where characters are uh, like getting frustrated with the National Assembly, and because we're we're in the points of view of those characters, like oh mm-hmm. my god, I see why it happens. And just because characters believe a thing doesn't, you know, mean that it's what the author just, agrees with. <clears throat> I guess I just wish that the story proved them wrong a bit more often. Mm-hmm. Like if yeah. the National Assembly did something actually ho- competent to show that you know they're not just there to get themselves killed on a ship. Yeah. Um, I I definitely understand that. Uh, it, it does seem a bit outside the scope of the story, in my opinion. Yeah, like we yeah, we, we got a lot like, to do. It's not like a major point; just something I felt a bit uneasy with as I read the yeah. books. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you know we also have a history of you know military meddling in yeah. politics here yeah, in, in Poland. Poland yeah. So yeah, other minor things or other things to chat about, Ian, Veronica. Uh, no, I can't think of anything. Oh, I, I liked the the feast scene where somebody asked, like, is any of this 
are, are you going to serve anything that's poisonous to us? And he's like, or, or is any of your food poisonous? And Juno is like, yes. Nothing that's being served here, but yes, we do have, we eat food that would be poisonous to you. <laughs> yeah. And, and I liked the feast scene where it's like, oh, no, no, we're, we're feeding you so you'll, you'll feel sluggish later at the duel. Mm-hmm. Like, that's hilarious. <laughs> I, I did very much enjoy how this whole like diplomatic meeting came down to like a Sunday grill. <laughs> the, you know that sounds very Australian. That, gotta have their you know, we should all, we should do more politics over grill. But just <laughs> to be honest, like literally in Australia, every election day you, you have to vote, and you you get you get. Uh, a sausage sizzle, like everywhere, they, they, <laughs> and, they, and they literally like oh, you get food great. at uh, polling stations. That. That's it's great. No, it's America great. Would, should do that so people actually vote. <laughs> well, Australia also has it, so it's mandatory that you vote. Like you, you have to. That would also help. That would also help. Uh, anyway, uh, but yeah. Uh, again, uh, I don't have much to say on it, but I still love Juno's standout character. I <laughs> love it. Yep. Loved all of that. Yeah. It's consistently speaking hilarious. Speaking of uh, Juno, I just, I remember. I really like the imagery of like the birds and the ways and like the meditation yeah. Juno gave yeah. Yeah. And, like, for the mind blades. It's really cool. I, I, and also, I, it made the birds on like the cover make sense. Which yep. is great. Oh, yeah, there is, isn't mm-hmm. there? Huh. Yeah, I didn't there notice it on zone. the cover and its own, like with all the text and everything. But when you huh. look at like their Instagram posts and all that with the wide banners, you can definitely see it. Huh. I do also like that Alanique was not good at Mind Blades and yeah. was kind of grumpy that Juno gave up on her. Because <laughs> like <laughs> Juno was like, Juno was like, oh, like I merely suggested she may not have had have the same aptitude for Mind Blades as you, Jorgen. Yeah, that would and not Alanique go well was like him. Alanique was not a fan of that. <laughs> but but it's a nice reversal of Jorgen being so frustrated that he that he's not good at the teleporting when the teleporting is so useful. Uh, yeah. So I, I I have really liked the diversification and specialization in Cytonic powers, uh, mm-hmm. which like in Defending Elysium, like one character just had all the abilities and we're just we're doing a lot of stuff. And so it's been nice to see certain characters being good at other things, because like I don't think Spence is going to be doing Mind Blade stuff. I feel like because she doesn't really do that. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. It, like, yeah. it would make sense for her character, but she's shown no indication of that ability. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, overall, Evershore was a delightful read. Uh, overall, like, ton- tons of stuff happening. And so let's rate and talk about the Scoured Flight novellas as a whole. So let's rank which one was your favorite. Let, let's... Let, Let's rank them from favorite to least favorite. Evershore, Evershore is first. Uh huh. Vidon, Sunny. Second. So, Very yeah, simple. Same. Yeah. <laughs> same. I I would probably put Vidon and Evershore like Exequo. Yeah. On the same on the same spot, then Sunreach at number three. And and that's not to say that Sunreach is bad. It's still a good mm-hmm. story, but it's it's a lot of the setup, and we're getting the one of them has to be the worst one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I still really liked it, but there's just something to me about like really nailing that landing uh, on on a series that's just like ah oh, nice. Oh, Stormlight Five, it's gonna be fun. Ooh. It's gonna be exciting. Yeah. Yes. Are you excited about future novellas for yeah, Skyward? 100%, yes. Yeah. Yes. I I want to read more of John C. Writing in Sight of Earth. Mm. Yeah. yeah and, I feel and- I feel like. She did an awesome job with those novellas. Mm-hmm. You know, regardless, I, I know I've been complaining about stuff. And <laughs> I know that I have been like something of a downer in discussions about it. But I feel so I feel it needs saying that, you know, I really enjoyed them and I want to read more of them. <laughs> Please give me more. <laughs> And I just want to say, like, these are not novellas. These are They're not. not. <laughs> yes. These are long. Also true. So it's like going forward, like these should not be branded as novellas. Like, I agree. Jancy is writing side over novels. Novels. I mean, yes. it, it's. I think they're branding it as novellas because 
it's confusing with the mainline novels. Mm-hmm. So like yes. say novellas yeah. is yeah. like, oh, okay, yeah. there's side But dudes. also post defiant, we won't have that problem. Yeah. <laughs> no. Exactly. And maybe we wouldn't need to, uh, you know, be so constrained with space. Because mm-hmm. I think Jancy was saying how, you know, like she wanted to fit more things in, but there's only so much she could do, right? Yeah. Uh, so maybe having a bit more space uh, could be fun and useful. Um, yeah. Who? I know it's hard because obviously we don't know what's indefined at all. Who would you want to see? I'm still going to use novella, sue me. Uh, but we all know <laughs> what we're talking about here. But they're, they're, they're beefy. 60,000 word novellas, yeah. um, which is usually okay. called a novel. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which characters would you want to see in later novellas? Hesho. Hesho. Kimmelin. Hesho. Kimmelin. Vapor. Vapor. Yes. Ooh, yes. Vapor. Anything yes. to do with figment, I yes. want. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. They're, like we got the little tease of them in this book. It's like Kuna has context among the figments, and that went nowhere. Yeah. Nowhere. <laughs> Hopefully, that's setting up something for Defiant or something. Kuna. I would like to have a novella with Kuna because I. It feels like the plot doesn't quite know what to do with them at the moment. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. something in Defiant because we rescued them and then nothing happens really with them. Yeah. They they just kind of hang out in the background of of the yeah. second and third novella. Like, not even, I don't know if there's much on Kuna in Redon. I don't, definitely don't remember. Uh, I know Alan Eek kept more. getting upset by yeah. Kuna calling them a lesser race, and Alan Eek was ready oh, to bust yeah. some heads. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, right, right. So, yeah, I would like to have a Kuna novella, you know, just to see them do something. <laughs> well, I mean, that could be a very interesting sort of thing. Presumably, we'll deal with Winsick, right, and fall out with that within the superiority. Yeah. Like yeah. that, that that could be very interesting and be purely politicking. And I think that could be done really well. Yeah, and that's that, something I'd love to read. That, Give me that, sci-fi politics. <laughs> that would actually be like very interesting because Jorgen, like the human Erdale, um, Kitson Alliance, is very anti-superiority yeah. for good reason. And so I think they're going to be among the factions that like, no, we just like totally dissolve this thing, get rid of it entirely. Mm. Whereas Kuna, I think it would be on mm. the faction of like, no, it's like there are good parts of the superiority. It's like we let's reform. We just need to like mm-hmm. fix the superiority. Yes. Which is like a time honored like dichotomy of like yes can you fix a corrupt institution like also <laughs> and yeah, it would yeah. be like a very interesting part of that fallout we were talking about before mm-hmm. yep. like, post defiant mm-hmm. that sounds great i i really like that though i am just reminded going off kimlin kimlin i hope she does some stuff in defiant because kimlin mm-hmm. Didn't really have a lot to do in these novellas. Like, she was there. But I'm just hoping that we will see some more character development for her uh, Mm -hmm. later. Because I I loved her after after Skyward. Like, I probably connected with her a lot more than FM, right? So it's just... It's just interesting how how much I like FM now. I'm like, what about Kimlin? Yeah, she has kind of been relegated to the role of, like, the squad sniper. Yeah, yeah. I imagine that in an in a sequence of novellas you you just can't do everything and so you need to pick mm-hmm. who are we going to develop who who's going to be like main person who gets big arcs who gets more minor arcs uh and so like with that i mean like arturo alanique like how's that relationship progressing right mm-hmm. uh and then some people it's like okay well we can't deal with them one well, now but like i'm intentionally mm-hmm. doing this rather than just like doing something poorly right uh, and so, more Kimlin, please. More Kimlin. Yeah, and uh-huh. something I've seen other people suggest on the server is, like, not post-defiant novellas, but, like, more prequel-style novellas for the other members of Skyward Flight who died mm. uh, during Skyward, mm. which would be mm. interesting. Mm. It just feels like the universe has expanded so much that if you're making other stories... Like, I mean, yeah. 
that like you kind of want to explore the universe more could be done well but that mm-hmm. that's i'm not ultra guess, thrilled about that i'm i'm i admit i'm not like super into the idea because it's kind of similar problem like with marvel movies and black widow <laughs> like yes. my, oh, my yes yeah like why it feels a bit weird to like get back to a character when you know that their story ends in an abrupt and sudden halt yeah mm-hmm. yeah it was just weird to me at least yeah you had to have a good point it it's hard to know where things will go after defiant but there's all sorts of fun and exciting world things that can be done. Um, but uh, Kuna Hesho and Kimlin, those are solid. I don't know what Kimlin would be doing, but that's why we got to give her a novella. Because I didn't know what's FM going to be doing in Sunreach. I'm, I, I don't care about her being the protagonist. That, okay, that wasn't what I exactly said, but I'm like, oh, okay, FM, sure, I guess. You know, and I was like, oh, FM's great. Love FM. Mm-hmm. Actually, you know, this this talk about prequels kind of reminded me one thing I m- failed to bring up earlier. One of the things I enjoyed about Evershore, the prologue with Jorgen and his parents. Like, yeah. Joshua oh, getting yeah. to be not a cackling villain for once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, showing a bit of, like, his family life right before yeah, yeah, we yeah. return to the part where his parents are already dead. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that was cool. I, yeah. I really like this prologue. Cool. Well, we talked about Evershore. We talked about the novellas. uh, And we'll be talking with Jancy next week. And so I think we will end this with a who's that Cidoverse character. This character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia Tom. Braze. Void in drag on a horse. (laughs) It's time for who's that? Cosmere character. Call. So you know how the game is played. You send your five clues in a character to WTCC at SMTShard.com. Um, and we read these clues loud. And then everyone guesses after each clue which character it is. And you you might just want to send Cosmere character ones. Although it would be fun to have Jancy do a Cyberverse character one. It but, would. But at the same time, uh, after the Jancy episode, I don't expect where there's going to be Cyderverse content for a while, because we definitely had a lot of Cyderverse late 2021 and now. Yeah. Also, like, don't send in a Cyderverse character in hopes of getting it on the Jancy thing, because no, no. Oh, yes. recording is not going to work out for that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because this is going to come out. Uh, as we're recording the Jancy episode, so mm-hmm. that that will not be useful, but I'll probably put something in Discord. So uh, yeah. if you had a time machine and you wanted to do one, then you could go back go back in time and go on Discord right now. But uh, I'm sure it will not surprise any of you that these two are sent in by number one town fan. Number one town uh, fan, I, yeah. Because I, like, I realized... I what uh, if town fan doesn't have any? Well, see... <laughs> Fun story, Veronica, because as we started recording, I'm like, oh, crap, I need these things. Uh, and so I just messaged him. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> then, yeah. Yeah, then he, I, then he I, did. I, like, I thought so. I was like, I'll write down the one I was thinking about the other day, just in case. Yep. 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 All right. So, clue one. This character is not a slug. <laughs> If you don't know Tal, uh, he 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 likes he likes the slugs. Number one, Juno. Slug fun. It's not Juno. Uh, well, let's go with the kids and team Hesho. It's not Hesho. Goro. If we don't Goro. Talk on this team. No. Nope. How many kids can we guess? But we uh-huh. don't have any other names. Well, one. But. <laughs> Clue two: This character has blue eyes and long hair. Okay, so I think that this counts, Kitson. <laughs> Yeah, how long can Kitson hair be? Maybe it'd be long for a Kitson, though, you know? Would it be hair or would it be fur? Ooh, that's a good point. Mm, that's a yeah. good point. What is hair? What is fur? Kimlin. I have no idea what her eye color is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. Uh, Kimlin, but... no. Uh, what'd you say, Veronica? Sadie. It's not Sadie. I'm gonna guess one of the inseparable duo, T-Stall. Oh, you're gonna do T-Stall? 
Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not tea stall. Still don't know why the hell. <laughs> what what is tea stall? I don't know. Please tell me. Can we have a novella about that? Actually, let's have a tea stall <laughs> prologue yes. novel just to to figure out what that even is supposed to mean. Uh, clue three: This character died in battle. Uh, it's morning tide. It's not morning tide. Oh. <laughs> Sadness immediately. I don't remember what Hurl looks like, so let's guess Hurl. It's not Hurl. Yeah, Vim doesn't work. So. Yeah, he had blue hair, right? Yeah, blue not hair. blue eyes. I keep thinking. I, I don't know. What you I'm have thinking. hair and you have eyes in that clue. Close enough. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Hair and blue in that clue. Long eyes, blue hair. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> That's an alien race for you. There you go. Free idea. Yeah. Like, 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 do any of the Dale have blue eyes? Because I know they're purple, but maybe blue eyes? I honestly, I yeah, don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just say Riankin because I wanted another clue. Who? Uh, Riankin, or however you pronounce their name. Riankin. Riankin. There. Oh, Thank you. Uh, are they alive? No. <laughs> uh, he does survive. Oh yeah, they are end. alive. Oops. Oh, yeah. right. um, well, it's, yeah. it's not I, that. I, I didn't write down. I didn't write down that third. Clue. Yeah. No wonder. I think Riankin was a he. Or yeah, am I? Or am I? I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Riankin yeah. is no. a he. Clue four. This character once competed with Ned to make towers out of algae strips. Okay. What other dead oh, Skywatch flight like members are there? <laughs> this is this is like guessing oh, dead bridge many way. Oh, it's going to be someone from the other flights, isn't it? Mm. I'm going to guess go okay. Who? Going to go ahead and guess lizard. It because. is lizard. Yes. <laughs> uh, clue wow. 5 is uh this character was a member of Nightmare Flight, so nice. Nailed uh, it. I mean, if it was, we had already discarded everyone from Skyward. <laughs> That's true, yeah. It had to be someone else from, from Yeah, I mean, no one dies after uh, Skyward, so I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I actually do want some people to d die in Defiant. That would really mm -hmm. help a lot. Yeah, I was, I, I was just, this don't... close to guessing Jeshua before I remembered that, you know, given that... Uh, Jorgen is dark skinned, his mother probably wouldn't be blonde. Well, it said long hair, not blonde hair. I heard blonde hair. Oh, well, oops. <laughs> like I, oops. I, I nearly guessed FM for the first oops. guess. Oops, <laughs> well, uh, the, the, re the listeners, the viewers, one of those, uh, can see the clues on screen, at least if you're watching it on YouTube. <laughs> All right. This next one, also from Town Fan. Uh, and clue <laughs> this character is also not a slug. <laughs> uh, Kauri. It's not Kauri. Hit the, nice. the uh -huh. squad. Nice. I'm going to say Vapor. It's not Vapor. If we're going to aliens, I'm going to say Kuna. Ooh, it's not Kuna. Clue two. This character is strong-willed and tenacious. Peg. It's not Peg. That's good, though. I like that. Alanic? It's not Alanic. Moriamur. It's not Moriamur. Clue three, though. This character is a pilot, but is currently unable to fly combat missions because of a certain factor. Spencer. It's not Spencer. But that, that's, that's actually a really good guess, like, though. I like that. That's true. That's true. Jorgen? It's not Jorgen. He can I mean, still he's fly. not flying. I mean, he can. He could if he wanted. He is not because he's the Admiral. No. I think he'll fly. How else I is mean, he going to yeah. summon giant mind blades to destroy people? <laughs> Come on. What was the first clue again? The first clue is that this character's not a slug. <laughs> oh, second clue. I, I read the first real clue. Oh, okay. Uh, this character is strong willed and tenacious. <laughs> To be fair, it is important to know that they're not slugs, so you guys aren't g constantly guessing slugs. <laughs> rig? It's not Rig. Clue four! This character is Erdale. Quilan? Oh, 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 oh. It's not Quilan. It's um, um, Alanique's, like, oh. sister oh. or sister-in-law because she's pregnant. 
Right, right. She's related to somebody who's pregnant. Rinnekin's uh, daughter, you mean? Rinnekin's Rinnick, think... daughter. Yes, I knew somebody was related yeah, yeah, yeah. to somebody who's pregnant. <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> think Alanique's related to that person, but it is Rinnekin's daughter. It is Aiden. And the clue five is this character is pregnant. Uh, so, <laughs> nice. For some reason, I got in my head that, like, th- th- uh, her brother was the father of the baby. I don't yeah, I, I have, I I have the same idea for some reason. Like, <laughs> Just, that, that's that's like a team point right there because what yeah. Ian first said is like it, it's close but critically not. <laughs> but yeah, you, yeah. you guys you guys team worked it, so that was good. <laughs> nice. What, what what was her name? Ainen. Ah, thank you. I didn't remember it either. So <laughs> neat. Good on tone, fam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have stumped <laughs> us. I mean, it's not <laughs> bad. You haven't stumped us. the fight over his articles, I am not surprised. I I am genuinely uh. Surprised, yeah, you got both of those because those those are easy characters to miss. Put your comments below if you remembered Ainen Renekin's daughter, and also comment below if you uh, what you thought of Evershore. Uh, put your comments below. You need to comment and press that like button. And I'm not just saying that as a YouTuber. I'm saying it because not many people are going to view a Ciderverse yes. things. And so if you comment and you do that engagement. Mm-hmm. Then uh, that useful. will boost it for the algorithm. So that that's that's a fact. Probably we don't actually know how the algorithm works, but engagement it helps. So also comment below if you also thought Alanique's brother was the father of that thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. tell, tell us the yeah. opinions. What yeah. what do you think? <laughs> yeah. Do people are like I have no recollection of this whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice. Well, everyone. 2022 is going to be a crazy year. Yeah. There's going to be some very cool non cast stuff that you might see eventually. Uh, and I'm very excited to show you. Uh, on December 31st. Uh, <laughs> Technically no. this year. No, 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 no. Uh, but it, it is going to be an exciting year. Uh, we're going to have our episode with Jancy next week. Uh, then we're going to do Words of Brandon. And uh, I do think there will be an entire episode basically about a single lob. But, yes. Yes. Uh, so... Yeah, I mean- I mean, granted, we're going to talk about other things in connection with that wob, but the the wob that spurred this, we're like, th- this is actually a, a big topic. So that will be after the Jancy episode. And then we'll have lots of words of Brandon from basically all the second half of 2021 that we haven't done. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing next. And then we'll have a bit more Era 2 content. And we'll also, we, we still have Rhythm of War content to do. So that's kind of... Uh, what Shardcast's gonna be up to, and then you might you might see some other things soon as well. Uh, and I'm thrilled. So I'll just be very cryptic right there. So <laughs> you can find us for all your news, discussion, theories, and fun that you ever want on 17shard.com. You can join our Discord. Links in the description. All these links are in the description. And you can say hi to us. Uh, Jancy's in Discord as well. It's mm-hmm. kind of... Yeah. Crazy. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, YouTube. Leave a comment below. You can also leave us a review on iTunes. And if you like our stuff, you can support us on Patreon. I think we're very close to our $1,000 goal, which is actually crazy. Like, I have looked at other YouTubers who have a massive, big audience, and they get maybe a third of what we have. So mm-hmm. we're, we're going to double our the budget. Y- yeah. I mean, we're connected with a very specific fandom. We're not just like, hey, we're a YouTuber. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's a little different. But yeah, you, we will up our art budget mm-hmm. when we hit that $1,000 goal. So that is going to be pretty cool. There's art mm-hmm. you can vote on. Anyway, we will see you all next time. Bye. 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 Ta. <laughs> I have a bird. Oh, yeah, I have a bird. <laughs> Isn't no, it cute? The bird is fantastic. We, we, we got delightful. this in Seattle. It's so, it's so cute. It's, it's nice. wonderful. Ka.